Sunday, a wonderful day where we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as we have been looking over this past week, we've seen that Jesus is victorious over the forces of evil. As creator, he is already head over all authorities. Through his crucifixion, Jesus disarmed Satan by taking away our sins. Satan can no longer use them against us. Jesus' resurrection adds another level to this victory that we can experience. We read about that this morning, but I want to read you again Luke 24, 19. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And then on to verse 30. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. Jesus' resurrection changes everything. Can you imagine how Jesus' disciples were feeling that Easter weekend so long ago? We read here in Luke that some of them decided to leave Jerusalem. They had believed that Jesus would be the one to redeem Israel from Roman rule. But now Jesus was dead. They had given up and there wasn't any need for them to stay where they were. They didn't yet understand all that Jesus' death meant. And they certainly weren't expecting him to return from the dead. Some of the women who followed Jesus had gone out to the tomb and found it empty that same morning. They had seen angels who told them that Jesus was alive. The women had told the other disciples who also found the tomb empty. But still, they couldn't believe that Jesus was alive and wasn't dead anymore. Jesus meets these two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They didn't know it was him, but when they told him about what happened over the past few days, he said to them, How foolish are you? How slow to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. The Life Application Study Bible writes this about these verses. The two followers thought returning to Emmaus at first missed the significance of history's greatest event because they were too focused on their disappointments and problems. In fact, they didn't recognize Jesus when he was walking beside them. And to compound the problem, they were walking in the wrong direction, away from the fellowship of believers in Jerusalem. After this encounter on the road, Jesus revealed himself to them when he broke bread with them. And we read about that. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while we talked? He talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures. So they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together, saying, It is true, the Lord has risen. When they realized the truth, that Jesus really was alive, it changed everything. Instead of leaving and turning away from Jerusalem in the company of the other disciples, they returned. The resurrection had changed everything for them. Jesus could still be the one to redeem Israel. The kingdom and redemption that they had longed for was still possible. Jesus' resurrection has changed everything for us, too. Have we allowed it, though, to make a significant difference in our lives? We, too, are likely to miss Jesus and withdraw from the strength found in other believers when we are faced with difficult circumstances or disappointments. Only when we are looking for Jesus in our midst 
where we experience the power and help that he can bring. Paul tells us that we have been raised with Christ. The resurrection of Jesus was good news. It was good news for him. But how does the resurrection of Jesus affect us? Jesus' resurrection changed everything for the disciples. But does it change everything for us? Let me read to you from Colossians 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Sanethian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. This passage from Colossians says that we have been raised with Christ. 2 Timothy 2 and 11 says if we have died with him, we will also live with him. Also in Romans 6 to 8, Paul says, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We share in Jesus' resurrection, just as we share in his death. He died for us, but he was also raised for us. Now, if we are dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. When we accept Jesus, we become a joint heir with Christ. We have a relationship with the Lord. He is the tree, and we are the vine and branches. He is the vine. Without him, we cannot exist. He supplies the strength, the power, everything we need. Without him, we can do nothing. He is always with us, and we are his representative here on earth. Colossians tells us that if we have been raised with Christ, that we should seek the things above. We should be setting our sights on the realities of heaven and strive to put heaven's priorities into daily practice. For you have died to this life means that we should have little desire for worldly pleasures. To, uh, the Christian's real home is where Christ lives. And to think about the things of heaven means to look at life from God's perspective and to seek what he desires. Paul says that a believer's life is hidden in Christ. It's beautiful. Our lives are hidden in Christ. Hidden means that it's concealed and safe. And this is not only a future hope, but a reality that we can have today. With Christ within us, we should take heart that our salvation is secure. And we should live each day for Christ, secure in him. I'm sure you all remember in the Lord's Prayer where it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I believe that's what Paul is getting at here in Colossians. There will come a time when that prayer will be completely fulfilled. When God dwells on earth, when as Revelation 21, 3 to 4 says, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. We look forward to this time, but we can live our lives today helping to usher in the kingdom of God. So what might that look like for us? How can we allow the resurrection of Jesus to make a difference? How should we live because of the resurrection? 
Colossians tells us that in light of all this, we should put to death what is, what is earthly in us and put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Paul lists off a number of things that belong to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry, anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. These are the natural behaviors of the old nature. But that old nature has died with Christ and should no longer have any place within us. Jesus' resurrection gives us victory over our old nature. But Jesus' resurrection, thank God, also gives us the power to live in this new way. We must rid ourselves of all evil practices and immorality. Then we can commit ourselves to what Christ teaches. Paul was urging the believers to remain true to their confession of faith. They were to rid themselves of the old life and put on the new nature given by Christ. We should live out the character of Jesus. Our lives should show forth the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm sure we can say those. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. Our conduct should match our faith. If we are Christians, we should act like it. <clears throat> to be a Christian means more than just making good resolutions and having good intentions. It means taking the right actions. Have we experienced Jesus' love? Then we should also show love. Have we experienced Jesus' generosity? Then we should also be generous. Whatever we have experienced and know of who God is, we should then seek to have this shown in our own life. Now, I don't expect that the moment we come to Jesus, the moment we accept him, that all of these things are to be evident in our life. This is a lifelong process. It takes time. And the more we know of Christ and his work, the more we are being changed to be like him. The Christian church should have no barriers. Christ breaks down all barriers and accepts all people who come to him. Nothing should keep us from telling others about Christ or accepting them into our fellowship. We should accept all people, all believers. It doesn't matter. There's no barriers. Christians should be building bridges not walls. If you had made if you had made such a commitment to Christ, are you remaining true to it? Today is Easter Sunday. The day we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we have seen over the past week, Jesus is victorious over the forces of evil. Jesus' resurrection gives us power to put off the old nature and live lives that reflect the life of Jesus. We can put off the old, and we can live lives of victory now because of Jesus' death and resurrection. The victory has been won by Jesus. Amen? Satan and his helpers may try to tear us down, may try to tempt us to sin and fail. They may even succeed at times. But through the resurrection of Jesus and the salvation that he offers, we have the power to overcome sin and to live lives of victory. Are you living a victorious life? Or is the power of evil seeping in and robbing your victory? Do not let the evil one tell you that there is no work for you to do. Do not let the evil one convince you that you are too old to do God's work. He is lying to you. Everyone has a work to do for the master. Through Jesus' resurrection, we have the power to overcome and defeat the evil one. We have been raised with Christ. And his power is made available to us. So let us live in victory, not defeat. God can do amazing things through us if we will just allow him to. 
We are raised with Christ. Therefore, let us live as Christ. This morning, we're going to spend some time in reflection. And we're going to sing a song that says, Lord, make Calvary real to me. Open mine eyes to the victory in Christ for me. It's personal. We can live with victory because of Calvary, because of what Jesus has done for us. <laughs> 